Welcome back to the shop, guys. I am excited because it's another new technique day. Uh, haven't done one of these in a while, so bear with me. If you're new to the channel, uh, I'll do some talking and some demonstrating, but I'm also going to explain what works for me and why I think it works for me and why it doesn't. So the talking is kind of an integral part of the process of learning what I'm doing. Uh, so to start off, I, it's a lot of trial and error when you, when you start something new, right? So my best advice before you dig into this is be prepared to number one, make mistakes. <laughs> number two, learn from the mistakes, but also uh, do practice. Okay. Do practice and uh, make sure that you're comfortable with some basic things before you try to make a final piece, right? Uh, I, I did lots of practice on this. I figured out what works, what doesn't work, and I'm going to explain that as I go along. So rather than just make a list and be a talking head. All right. So let's get started on what we're looking at. So to start off, we are looking at just a basic sheet of the aluminum. This is the same aluminum that I used in my P47, and I've got a three part series on how to cover an airplane in uh, aluminum, but I do not plan on using any fiberglass on this, mostly because the swirl pattern is not gonna be as prone to having this very light grain of balsa come through it. Uh, I done, I've done this by experimentation, but again, you should do the same for you because your wood may be a little bit different and your application may be a little bit more forceful where it would come through. So your mileage may vary, try on your own first. That being said, we have the sheet of aluminum taped to a piece of backing, which is foam board, just straight up foam board. It's uh, black stuff and the black stuff doesn't have the paper come off very easily. The reason that we have it on the foam board is the foam board acts as a bit of a cushion. So what we're gonna do is put a mandrel essentially in a drill press and we're gonna press down while it's spinning and create the swirl pattern one little circle at a time. Now, if you don't have the correct amount of back pressure or if you have dirt or a debris or a warp of some kind, you're not gonna get an even pattern. So it's important to have a bit of a springy cushion underneath. I'll tell you right now that <laughs> I actually made a couple of mistakes trying to figure that out. Uh, I tried several different backing substrates um, and this is what works for me and it works consistently. So take it for what you will. It's a dollar, a dollar for a sheet of, of foam board and it'll get you many backings if you have some screw ups, depending on the size, obviously, uh, of the backing and the, the project that you're working on. The aluminum is the same stuff that I got off of Amazon. This is actually the original roll that I was working on with the P47. Uh, I have another roll buried back in the corner and it just, it works really well. It, the adhesive, it's the same stuff as flight metal. You guys, it, it's the same stuff. Flight metal doesn't make their own stuff in house. They just buy this stuff and it's not a huge deal to get the name brand. And honestly, this is half off. Uh, I will gladly take half off. Uh, so anyway, we've got a, a one inch. Hang on a sec. I didn't explain that we're using a Scotch-Brite pad for this. Uh, it, in the demonstration, I'm using gray, but what you're seeing here is red. I just cut out a single disc and insert it into the tool using some uh, rubber cement. That's it. Definitely don't recommend any sort of sanding paper. So sorry to slow you down. Back to the show. Pattern that we're going to do. And the reason for such a large pattern is I want this pattern to be seen visually in the air. It doesn't have to be one inch pattern, but the smaller that you go, the more work it's going to be. So keep that in mind. Uh, but it may be worth it to you on your scale model, right? So what we've got is just the bare piece of aluminum. I cleaned it with isopropyl alcohol and then, uh, well, I made a whole bunch of markings. So let me show you how that's done. The markings that we're going to create are one inch in diameter. So we need to make these marks at half that. So making a whole bunch of half inch markings and then one direction I'm putting down horizontal lines to use as a guide when I go to apply these. 
And then on the opposite direction, I'm doing every other line to create a target for when I lower the mandrel, I have something to aim at. So now that the marking is done, uh, we are ready to go. And keep in mind that any mistakes or things that you wanna do, you can clean up with isopropyl alcohol because I'm using a straight normal Sharpie. But yeah, so now we're gonna take this and we're gonna chuck it in the drill press and show you how to do that. Some people have recommended that you use a lubricant for doing this, but I found that that was actually not needed at all and kind of interfered with the bonding of the natural adhesive that's on the back of this stuff. So just take your time, go through it methodically, and as you get through, you have to kind of manipulate things around. Follow the sequence row by row. Don't mess that up because otherwise it will look lopsided. I wanted to make this intentionally look a little bit manually done uh, just because of an old timey feel. I understand that, you know, machining would be a little bit more precise than this, but I like that sort of manual feel and the end result looks fantastic. Okay, so now that we're done with this, we still have a little bit of marker residue left on here, and we want to clean that off as much as possible before we apply it to the model, because if we end up cleaning it later, the ink can actually run onto your other covering film and mess up any finish. So let's just remove that out of the equation right now. Looks pretty darn good to me. All right, guys, let me walk you through this. So I'm trimming off this little bit. It's a half circle equivalent, just because part of it's not uh, been treated with the, uh, with the tool. So then I put it over top of the part and trim off the excess before I even peel off the backing, just to sort of get the excess out of the way. You can use the edge of your razor to sort of get in between the aluminum and the paper backing to separate it if you have any difficulty. Then you can just slowly apply, put pressure a little bit at a time. Note that my fingers are going on my left hand are going on the back side. I have to support the balsa because you have to press kind of firmly, especially as you mold out some of the aluminum. It bends, right? So then you're continuing to uh, apply it, trim it, make sure that it's gonna fold over smoothly and neatly. You're gonna cut you know, 90 degrees or 45 degrees, however you want to, in order to get the seam that you want at your corners. Now notice here on the front leading edge, I'm gonna fold this over and it's just gonna tuck in nicely so that I have a nice seamless finish here so that I don't have to worry about things wearing out too prematurely or have any problems down the road. Worth a little bit of effort to use the back of my knife here to smooth things out just because it's metal on metal, but you know, I'm, I'm not going too heavy handed on it just so that I don't mess up the, the micro scratches that I've already created. So after some additional cleaning up with some just uh, window cleaner on a paper towel, we are left with this. Now there's some ever so slight indentation on here with uh, regard to the marker. The camera on the, uh, the, the video camera <laughs> that I'm using accentuates it really, really heavily. Um, it's not nearly as bad in person, but it is there ever so slightly. We're talking about these horizontal lines, the guidelines. So I, I can try to do that a little bit lighter. Make sure that you're using a good quality felt tip marker. Uh, do not use a fine tip Sharpie like this. Do not, because it will most certainly give an impression, uh, like an em embossing. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, you guys can do this at, at home, obviously, with some other kind of drill. But if you don't have a drill press, it's going to be hard to regulate the direct up and down and, you know, angling. 
So I highly recommend that you find someone with a drill press or get a drill press yourself. Uh, mine is off of Amazon. It's a pretty cheap one, it's less than $100. And I use it all the time, uh, not just for this stuff, but like actually drilling, you know, holes and stuff. Um, also as like drum sanders, they make attachments for that. It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, there's more than one way to use a drill press and that's definitely the way that I recommend. Now in terms of the mandrel, the mandrel is a 3D print file that is available. I will post a link to it in the description. Make sure you download it. Uh, you can you can attach the, the pad to something else that you want to do in your own way. You don't have to use this, uh, but it's what worked for me and it's a very simple print. Uh, it's it, it doesn't take long to print either. So that being said, guys, just get in your shop. Start playing with this. Uh, I, I really like how this turned out. And I really think that it's gonna make this whole airplane, once the whole nose of it is covered in this, it's really gonna set it off quite nicely. And you know, the, the great part is that a lot of this can be applied to other models too. Uh, if you wanna try it on something else in the future, even if it's just a panel, one panel, like an instrument panel, just, you know, the instrument panel in the cockpit, you can do little teeny tiny one, there's so many fun things you can do with this. So check it out. Uh, if you need any other gear, make sure you're also checking out Dubro.com. I'm telling you, those guys have all the things that you need to build. Their hinges last forever. Most of their stuff is made in the US and I just love it. Uh, discount code Josh10 in checkout. Don't forget that because that'll save 10%. And I don't get anything from that. That really is for you guys. So check that out, and until next time, keep working on your flying works of art. If you've made it this far in the video, this is your reward.